Will the Center Point project finally be getting off the ground? And we're ready to go. The developer has given us a new timeline of what he says is next for the project. It's been unsolved for nearly two years. What family members of a victim of a double murder are doing to bring new attention to that case. It's an important lesson for some high school students how they're learning about the dangers of human trafficking. This is WQIT News at 6. Good evening to you. It has been plagued by many delays over the last eight years, but tonight the developer of Centerpoint in downtown Lexington tells us the project is finally ready to move forward. Dudley Webb talked to us on camera today, and he says he has a new timeline for Centerpoint. Sean Moody joins us live with our top story at 6. Hi, Sean. Hey there, Sam and Amber. Dudley Webb talked about the, how the project got to this point. The economic slowdown, funding he expected but didn't get, and now newfound optimism in the project. He said he's putting all that frustration behind him, and he's asking the public to do the same. He says in less than two years, Centerpoint could be a reality. For the first time in a long time, Centerpoint has somewhat of a timetable. I think that it's about eight to ten months to build a garage, and then probably another year to complete the towers. It's been a long time getting to this point, going on eight years now, and perhaps no one knows that better than Dudley Webb. We're not pointing fingers, uh, nor, nor is the city, I don't think. Uh, it's just time that we move this project forward. That's what's important, and it's going to happen. Webb said the trouble was that as soon as one piece of the project was in place, another would fall out of place. He said he was ready to start building in 2014, but said the city declined to issue TIF bonds he was counting on. Last week, after another developer who'd gotten involved last year backed out, Webb said his company was ready to see the project through on their own. It's behind us. Let's don't book back and let's, let's go ahead and have this baby. Webb says financing is in place, as are people to fill the buildings. Yes, the two Marriott hotels have been committed from the day one. They're still there. Jeff Ruby's still there. Uh, the office building, we're back up to probably 40 to 50 percent pre lease as opposed to 90, where we were when we lost the big tenants. And that uh, we're ready to go. Webb also says he knows there's skepticism out there. People have expressed the concern that, you know, crews go down there and they move some rocks from one pile to another and they say, oh, we're, we're working, but it's not really progressing toward anything. What's, how, how do you alleviate that concern that, that people are saying? Well, I, the only thing that will alleviate those concerns is for them to see the concrete trucks there. We know that. Now, as far as those trucks go, Webb says you can expect to see concrete trucks down there in the pit in the next few days. Live in Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. On WKYT.com, we have an interactive history of the Centerpoint project going back to 2008. Governor Bevin says he is tired of waiting for his proposed state budget to be passed. So today, the Republican used social media to call out lawmakers in the state house, which has a Democratic majority. But as Victor Puente tells us, House Speaker Greg Stumbo says his chamber still has many questions about the governor's budget. Kentucky's Democratic Party has called the video misleading. In it, Governor Matt Bevin enters the chambers of the state house of representatives and finds it empty. The Speaker of the House says they were busy working on a budget just across the street. The video, posted this morning, has received thousands of views. Governor Matt Bevin walks into the empty room and asks why the budget he proposed in January hasn't been passed. They've been in session for an average of just over an hour a day this entire legislative session. They're being paid to be here full time. House Speaker Greg Stumbo says work was happening at the Capitol Annex. I don't think he's been over here during this entire session, so maybe someone should uh, ask him if he needs an escort. We can show him around this building. Maybe he can become familiar with it. This is where the work goes on today. The House isn't scheduled to meet until 4 o'clock on Mondays. Stemmo says they've been trying to pass a budget, but keep hitting roadblocks. Every one of our subcommittee chairmen had the same story, that the questions they're asking, the information they're asking for, hasn't been forthcoming. He also said the cuts to higher education that budget proposes aren't very popular. People like public education. Um, we see it in the polls. We hear it in our districts. You hear it across Kentucky. But Bevin says the cuts are necessary to keep from passing debt on to future generations. I called for us to make sure that we stop spending the money of our children and grandchildren to pay for today's problems. A special election tomorrow will determine if the state House of Representatives continues to be controlled by Democrats. In Frankfurt, Victor Puente. WKYT.
And by the way, there are 19 days left in the legislative session. New tonight, we now know the source of a salmonella outbreak in Estill County that made more than 70 people sick. Judge Executive Wallace Taylor says investigators have determined a cook working at Eagles Roost Sports Bar and Restaurant was infected with salmonella but didn't know it. Eagles Roost voluntarily closed last month as a precaution but has since reopened. It's been nearly two years since investigators say someone killed a Richmond couple in their home, but police have not been able to make any arrests. So they're hoping to get the public's attention by increasing the reward they're offering in the unsolved case. Hillary Thornton has the update new at six. This summer will make two years that Kelly Sproles has been without her sister. First year we was just like in shock that we lost our sister. And then the second the year it's like it sinks in and it's like it's a it's devastating. In June of 2014, Karen Simpson and her boyfriend Avery Bucci Evans were found dead inside of their Valley Street home. Now about a mile away from that house, right at the railroad tracks heading into downtown Richmond on Main Street, a billboard asking for help. Because we know there's uh, probably somebody out there that knows something that we need to know. It is an investigation that police say has never stopped and is one that they say they are actively pursuing day in and day out. However, with the couple's killer still out here, they're now hopeful that an offer of $10,000 will encourage those with information to come forward. A lot of people should see it. It may generate some conversation. And uh, if that may generate a phone call, that may be very useful for it. I still think there's people talking about it. I still think there's a lot of people that know what happened to her. And I'm just asking, you know, please just turn them in. Because if it happened to our family, it could happen to yours. Hoping some new information paired with their existing evidence will allow them to piece everything together. No, it's not going to bring them back, but at least we'll have some kind of closure somehow, some way. In Richmond, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Police say any piece of information, even if it seems small, could help them solve this case. Spring doesn't officially begin for a few more weeks, but we'll have an early taste of it this week. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has more on the warm forecast. Love it, Chris. Yeah, we are warming it up, my man, over the next few days. Today, a mild day. Tomorrow, by March standards, it is warm. We're going to hit the 70s. Right now, we're seeing a little sunshine after mostly cloudy skies. Better part of the day. Check that shot out right now on the western horizon. 61 degrees in Lexington. Winds are coming at us from the south and southeast at around 7 miles an hour. That is a milder flow that is kicking on in across the entire area. So low and mid-60s showing up into much of central and eastern Kentucky. If you're out this evening, we're going to drop it close to the 50 to 55 degree range by late this evening. That's still pretty darn nice with a mix of stars and some clouds hanging tough. Nothing showing up on your Defender Radar Network. We bounce it out a little bit and show you that southerly wind flow that is kicking into high gear and that will be with us for the next several days. So spring fever taking hold of the bluegrass state. Temperatures heading toward the 70s. When I come back in a few minutes, we'll time that and the return of some late week thunderstorms. That's in a little over 10 minutes from now. To many of us, the phrase human trafficking seems like something that happens in another place, when in reality it's a problem that can happen anywhere, and in Kentucky it is. One central Kentucky group is doing its best to teach high school students a real lesson in the dangers of human trafficking in hopes of rewiring the thought process when it comes to sexual exploitation. Victims and survivors. I was property, and they were fighting over me. Human trafficking, it's a multi-billion dollar industry and Kentucky is no stranger. When you look at numbers for any type of trafficking data, you should always note that it's underreported and that's definitely the case here in Kentucky. Reagan Luckadoo studies what she calls modern day slavery. She says trafficking can happen anywhere. Many times it starts with abuse and for victims it can escalate quickly. Research shows 12 to 14 year old girls are most vulnerable. You really do need to be looking for an avenue to reach these students, ideally in the middle school or early high school age, where you're making them aware that traffickers exist. Sitting me down and putting on pornography. A new video series called Rewire is aimed at making that introduction. Recently, students at Lexington and Christian Academy tackled the hard lesson. Really, this is hopefully a catalyst for, hey, we're not afraid to talk about difficult subjects, and we're here for you, and we want you to trust us. It's a lesson plan that includes testimony from women who were all exploited. It's a learning curve for all. For some of us, 
Um, this is also new information. The videos were created by Refuge for Women, who helps fight sexual exploitation. The four-part series focuses on human trafficking, the dangers of pornography, sexual abuse, and social media, all avenues experts say can lead to someone being trafficked. You guys have no idea how much it means to me to just see these issues being talked about. Meredith Crockett, a high school junior, was inspired to bring Rewire to her Lexington youth group. Crockett wishes its topics were discussed more among her peers. I've always just known that these issues have been present in our world and present in teenage lives, but I just had always seen this sense of apathy towards these issues. Nicholasville police officer Scott Harvey first launched the program at a safe schools conference last year. A longtime DARE officer, he's seen how education and prevention go hand in hand, and this time he's starting to see the rewire happen in another way. We felt like there was things that weren't being discussed in public schools or in churches, uh, and our kids were paying a price. And so it's not being discussed because it's an uncomfortable conversation. We get that. So we said we're going to put videos together that will be the uncomfortable conversation in the beginning to break the ice. The goal now for Harvey, who works alongside Refuge for Women, is for thousands of students to take part. Crockett is pushing for Rewire to be offered in her West Jessamine High School. A tall order, but one Reagan Luckadoo says other states are doing to help educators spot trafficking and report it. Our teachers in Kentucky are trained really well with issues of bullying and safety issues and child abuse. Um, and so we just need to add this to the list. Right now, Texas, Virginia, Ohio, and Idaho have some type of legislation requiring training for educators and other school personnel on human trafficking. For more information on the Rewire series and an upcoming conference at Georgetown College on human trafficking, look for this story on WKYT.com. Now that votes have been counted, Kentucky Republican leaders looking back on Saturday's caucus, will it return in four years? That's next. I've covered thousands of games over decades. You think you can beat me? Challenge Dave Baker and play the Big Southeast Hoops Hysteria Tournament Pick'em game for your chance to win a 43-inch LG TV. Sign up today on WKYT.com. With a variety of fresh made seafood meals starting at just $4.99, no one does seafood like these. Try our new homestyle flounder meal or double dozen shrimp or our grilled menu featuring new Tuscan tilapia, each with two sides and hush puppies. For full meals starting at $4.99, it's got to be D's. Are you planting a tree? Are you digging a garden? Are you digging a swimming pool? Are you putting up a mailbox? Always call 811 before you dig. It's not just a good idea, it's the law. Columbia Gas of Kentucky. Remember the feeling you got when you did something you didn't know you could do? Get that feeling again. Everyone loved your proposal. Want our business. With a degree from Indiana Wesleyan University, you just might surprise yourself with what you can accomplish. Visit IWULexington.com to explore our courses. IWU, anything is possible. Did your family set a goal to become healthier in the new year? One family did and lost 300 pounds at Ageless. Bruce lost 92 pounds, Adam lost 64 pounds, and Catherine lost 151 pounds. For a medically supervised affordable weight loss solution, call Ageless today for a free consultation. If your child ever asks, where do sandwiches come from? Tell them the truth. Look them straight in the eyes and tell them, sandwiches come from Arby's. And if they ask where the loaded Italian and its many meats come from, kindly respond. What part of Arby's didn't you understand, Giuseppe? The loaded Italian sandwich. Arby's, we have the meats. Government insiders like Chuck Tackett have taken Kentucky in the wrong direction. Tackett was part of government so long, he forgot who he was there to help, the people. Tackett's government salary grew four times faster than the average Kentuckians. That's not fair. A better plan for Kentucky? The Philip Pratt Plan. Jobs and higher wages for working people, not politicians. Common sense policies to empower people, not government. Sign the Pratt Plan petition at KentuckyOpportunityCoalition.com. The average person takes five to 8,000 steps per day, working, exercising, going about the day. 
High-tech artificial limbs keeps you moving comfortably. You can choose who helps you walk in the right direction. With a variety of fresh-made seafood meals starting at just $4.99, no one does seafood like Dee's. Try our new homestyle flounder meal or double dozen shrimp or our grilled menu featuring new Tuscan tilapia, each with two sides and hush puppies. For full meals starting at $4.99, it's got to be Dee's. Saturday's Kentucky Republican Caucus is now history, but will the GOP have another four years from now? This year, the Kentucky Republican Party held a caucus for the presidential race instead of a primary, so Senator Rand Paul could run for president and U.S. Senate. The Republican Party reports 18% turnout for the caucus. That's more than the 2012 Republican primary, but less than in 2008. While party leaders call the caucus a success, they say there were a few issues. The biggest challenge we faced were Democrats and independents who came to caucus locations and wanted to participate. It was great to have them there. You know, only Republicans could vote. So that maybe slowed things down a little bit. Republican Party leaders say they have not decided whether to have another caucus for the next presidential election. They say it would need a different funding strategy. Senator Paul paid $250,000 to help cover the costs of Saturday's caucus. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. A lot of clouds across the area today, but some late day breaks beginning to appear as those thermometers uh, surge into the 60s, a sign of things to come. We'll do it a little better over the next few days. Live look outside our Kentucky weather cams. Focus on that cam right in the middle, Lexington. Some sun showing up before old Saul calls it quits for the day. Mostly cloudy skies for the better part of the afternoon, though a little bit of sunshine beginning to appear. Upper 50s to low 60s into a little pocket of north central, northeastern Kentucky where we've had some thicker cloud cover. Some breaks in the clouds elsewhere, 60 to 65 degrees showing up. Really, really nice now. Tomorrow we're going to add likely 10 degrees on top of what we see now. 70 to 75 coming up for the day tomorrow. Those clouds, at least a thicker variety of clouds, may have had a little sprinkle with them across the I-64 area from around Mount Sterling over to Moorhead up towards sections of the Maysville area and Mason County. More clouds are off to our west. Nothing, though, that is overly thick or going to produce precipitation in the short term. Temperatures tomorrow will head toward the low 70s into the afternoon. Mix of sun and clouds all day long. Winds are going to be gusty, but overall, I don't think we'll complain if winds hit 30 miles per hour as long as we're going to have temperatures that soar into the 70s. High pressure across the east coast, low pressure across Texas, big upper level low. A uh, very anomalous low to see any time of the year, let alone in March. And the flow out ahead of this is straight off the Gulf of Mexico. Actually, you can trace that to the Caribbean and then across Mexico into the Pacific. That means, yes, we're going to warm it up, but also a lot of juice is coming into the Mississippi Valley. So through Wednesday, showers and storms are off to our west. After Wednesday night into early Thursday, that focus will then work toward the east into our part of the country. That's especially by the end of the week toward the weekend. Focus on the positive. Hour by hour forecast. New numbers in tomorrow. Upper 40s, low 50s to start. Noon time tomorrow. Already mid and upper 60s. So you know it's going to be a toasty afternoon. 70 to 75 beautiful degrees as we go throughout the afternoon. Tomorrow night and into Wednesday morning. Not a big drop in thermometers. We are likely to stay in the 50s for those temperatures. And by the time we roll into Wednesday afternoon, how about mid 70s? This is showing a 77 into parts of southeastern Kentucky. It's one of those days. If you get a little more sunshine, you're going to see temperatures head toward 80 degrees. What about Wildcat fans heading down to the SEC tournament in Nashville? Friday, 75, upper 60s to around 70 over the weekend. There is a chance for a shower or thunderstorm any particular day. So keep that in mind. But it is a very warm Nashville for Wildcat fans heading down there this coming weekend for the SEC tourney. Forecast back here at home is pretty toasty as well. 75 Wednesday into Thursday. Threat for a shower or thunderstorm. Best chance around here comes as we go into Saturday and Sunday with temperatures still in the 60s for highs. Still mild into most of next week, I think. A lot of people like that forecast for Nashville. It looks really warm. Only drawback will be the chance for a shower or thunderstorm. You win, who cares what it's doing outside? <laughs> You're right about that. <laughs> Thanks. All right. The play of Scal can make a big difference, Rob. Well, it can. He has looked like a different player the last couple of games. Cal talks about what it really means to Kentucky as a team. And Jacob Tammy on his former teammate, Peyton Manning, who retired earlier today. Sports is next. Stay with us. First Alert Weather is brought to you by Columbia Gas of Kentucky. 
celebrating our anniversary this week at Ashley Home Store with 72 months interest-free financing. Get our best-selling queen storage bed for less than $13 a month and the snail head trim sofa for only $10 a month. Plus, pick up the 50% off all clearance items. Ashley Home Store. This is home. At Baptist Health, we want you to know the facts. Visit BaptistHealthTalks.com to view a video of cardiologist Michael Rukavina on a new leadless pacemaker technology. Baptist Health Lexington. Be a healthier you. Window World, superior products and professional installation at a guaranteed low price. When it comes to home remodeling, a new door can make a huge compliment to windows and siding. That's why Window World, America's largest home remodeling company, carries patio doors, entry doors, and storm doors. All backed by our lifetime limited warranty and guaranteed low price. Whether you're trying to make a statement or you simply want the best value, opportunity is knocking at Window World. Window World, simply the best doors for less. Everyone has their own tastes, and Kroger has something for the one who likes eating healthy, the one who loves to eat, and the one just learning to eat. From cleaning the plate to cleaning the house, you'll find a brand for everyone in your family. And because everyone loves to save money, our exclusive brands are affordable too. Delicious, delightful, and made just for you. Everything to make your everyday special with our family of brands at Kroger. By the numbers, Whitaker Bank loves the Kentucky communities we serve. With Whitaker Bank's new home equity loan, I only had to pay 1% of my balance back monthly. Whitaker Bank lets qualified applicants borrow up to 90% of your home's value to use now or down the road. I had zero closing costs with the help of Whitaker Bank and the power of the equity in my home. We share your passion, Kentucky. Love the bank that loves you back. Whitaker Bank is uniquely Kentucky. Backed by Washington's Super PACs, Philip Pratt is waging a campaign of distortion and lies. So false, Pratt's Super PAC had to stop airing its dishonest ads. Chuck Tackett, farmer, Frankfurt outsider, and servant leader, Chuck Tackett will stand up to the career politicians, take on political insiders, and fight for us. On Tuesday, reject Philip Pratt and his Washington Super PAC's campaign of lies. Vote Chuck Tackett, farmer, Frankfurt outsider. Ever take a whiff of a smoker's hair? You're smelling contamination that remains after the cigarette is out. Smokers actually emit very harmful toxins from clothing, hair, and skin, even if they no longer smell like it. Think about that and pay attention to everyone who picks up your child. It's the anniversary sale at Ashley Home Store, and we're celebrating with 72 months interest-free financing. Or take 10% off your entire purchase, plus take 36 months to pay interest-free. Hurry in. These anniversary savings won't last long. Ashley Home Store. This is home. Over the last two games, Kentucky fans have seen the best of Scalabissier, and it couldn't have come at a better time. The game Saturday against LSU, the best he's played in a Wildcat uniform. His draft stock went back up, and Kentucky's fortunes on the court also go up because it opens up things for other players. The biggest thing is Marcus Lee is able to play to his strengths, which is his energy, his offensive rebounding, tip dunks, dunking balls being around that goal. He's not asked to do more. He's asked to play right into his sweet spot. And Derek also helps with that. Scowl being plugged in um, really kind of puts the pieces where they need to be. SEC tournament this week. Kentucky is the two seed and will play Friday night at 7 o'clock against either Ole Miss or Alabama. Tyler Ulis is one of five finalists for the 2016 Bob Cousy Point Guard of the Year Award. The honor recognizes the top point guard in Division I basketball. Ulis has been fantastic, averaging 16.6 .6 points and 7.4 assists. He'd be the first Kentucky guard ever to win the honor. Jameen Davis, a linebacker in the class of 2017 out of the state of Georgia, is committed to the Wildcats. The 6'3", 205-pound linebacker has not been rated by any of the four major recruiting services. Davis also has offers from Georgia State and Tulane. When Peyton Manning made his decision to retire over the weekend, one of the first people he contacted was his former teammate, Jacob Tammy. Manning walks away from the game after winning his second Super Bowl. Lee K. Howard has the story. There's just something about 18 years. 18 is a good number. And today I retire from pro football. 
18 was a good number and one of the very best to ever play the sport of football. A five-time NFL MVP and two-time Super Bowl champion, Peyton Manning revolutionized the quarterback position, not by his athleticism, but by his work ethic. Peyton pushed himself to the absolute limits uh, at everything that he did. You know, he was a great competitor. Jacob Tammy played seven seasons with Manning, catching nine touchdown passes during that span. The quarterback tight end tandem even made the transition together from Indianapolis to Denver. Just making that transition with him was really neat for me. It was a privilege to be a part of that and uh, really helped grow our friendship. Manning leaves the game as the NFL's all-time leader in passing yards and passing touchdowns. There were other players who were more talented, but there was no one who could out-prepare me. And because of that, I have no regrets. Off the field, Manning found success as the NFL's top pitch man. Epic comeback starts right here. Something he's likely to continue after football. I don't know what will be next for Peyton. He'll be great at whatever he does. You know, uh, we discussed it uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, whatever he does, he'll be great at it. it. You know, it'll be fun to see what he does next. Manning is leaving the game as a champion a month after winning Super Bowl 50, a fitting end to a storybook career. I revere football. I love the game. So you don't have to wonder if I'll miss it. Absolutely, absolutely, I will. Lee K. Howard, WKYT. Thank you, Lee K. A lot of high school action tonight. We'll have all the highlights right here at 11. Thank you, Rob. A final check of your first word forecast is coming up. And then on the CBS Evening News, it is a medical phenomenon. Meet the first recipient of a uterus transplant. WKYT's First Alert Weather follows you wherever you go, on TV, online, on your phone, and throughout the day on 100.1 WKQQ. Philip Pratt, a proud grandfather, a loving and caring family man, a hardworking small business owner, someone who knows how to grow jobs and change the landscape in Frankfurt. Philip Pratt will hold government accountable responsibly fight Obama's crippling government overreach on our agriculture economy, and preserve our Kentucky heritage in Owen and Scott County. On Tuesday, March 8th, vote Philip Pratt for state representative. Let's put winter behind us and get out there in a new 2016 Go Anywhere Subaru with symmetrical all-wheel drive. Right now, own a new 2016 Forester for only $23,980 or lease it for just $224 per month. Or own a new 2016 Legacy for only $24,490 or lease it for just $230 per month. Discover why Quantrell is Kentucky's number one sales volume Subaru dealer for the last four years. Come into Quantrell today for a great deal on a new Subaru during the Subaru Love Spring event. Celebrate the arrival of spring with 12 months same as cash at Lexington Furniture. New collections are arriving daily and now's the time to save. You'll discover a look for every room, every lifestyle, and colors that reflect your personality. Decorate your home with quality, long-lasting home furnishings, all from America's best manufacturers. Get your home ready for spring with 12 months same as cash at Lexington Furniture. It's furniture you'll love to live with. I'm Bill Nolker, and I'm running to be your state representative. As a former Navy fighter pilot, I have many times been sent into battle in service of my country. Flying into combat, I didn't care whether the commander-in-chief or my wingman was a Democrat or a Republican. What I did care about was successfully completing the mission. I'm running because the people of Boyle and Casey County want that same kind of leadership. They want a leader that understands their needs and represents their values. I'm asking for your vote on March 8th because I want to be your voice. Vote Nolker, March 8th. Duty, honor, service. I'm on a fixed income. Credit cards help me balance the money that's coming in and what I need to live on. I've thought about bankruptcy, but how am I supposed to pay for it? Sometimes the people that need help the most are the very people who can least afford it. We've come up with a way to get you started for less. Say no to debt. Start your bankruptcy for only $78 now. The consultation is free in Lexington and now in London. Change is taking root in Frankfurt. We need a voice that'll be heard. Daniel Elliott is the conservative for Boyle and Casey counties. Dedicated to protect our God-given freedoms from Obama liberals, Daniel will ensure government is held accountable and our Kentucky values are protected. Daniel Elliott, 
will fight government overreach that's crippled our economy. We need a strong voice. On Tuesday, March 8th, vote Daniel Elliott for state representative. Great shot there at Moorhead State University. Those are the days when you've been going through winter, walking to class all bundled up, and then this shows up, and you don't have to have a coat at all. You went to class? I did. <laughs> oh, you did. I know. <laughs> she had to show me where the library was when we went back for uh, the career fair last week. We look at the seven day forecast. Temperatures will hit the 70s over the next few days. Uh, Mid 70s coming up Wednesday into Thursday. It could be a shower, a thunderstorm, end of the week, and especially into the coming weekend. I thought you lived in the library. I did. I love the library. Where were you? Chris still doesn't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We will That's see you at 11. CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley's next.